Christian, I tell me about your hat. Yeah, so I'm wearing a hat. Yeah. For those of you who can't see, I have a hat on, and it is a Mount Olive hat. Yeah. Mount Olive, of course, being the company that makes pickles and relish. Yeah. Uh, Mount Olive is actually stationed out of North Carolina. Really? Okay. That's where they, yeah, the main factory is in North Carolina. And Is that uh, where the mountain is? Mm-hmm. Mount Pickle. Olive. Mount, Fuck. M- Mount Olive. Mount, Olive, Mount Pickle, they grow- dude, I would <laughs> climb Mount Pickle so fast because you know that there'd be a little gift shop on top that sold t-shirts. You know there yep. would be. And has, I do- I'd like I and dominated pickles. Mount Pickle. <laughs> God, and all I got be, was this lousy hat. It'd be a cultural a icon, but go on. It would. So Mount Olive, no olives there, just pickles. I don't know why they're called Mount. I mean, like they're called Mount Olive because it's in Mount Olive. Like that's a place. Yeah. A city in North Carolina. Uh, yeah. like like the universe. You ever heard of Mount Olive University? I absolutely haven't. Really, really. They're uh, they're not great. <laughs> they're not great over at Mount Olive University. I think oh. there's like eight people that go. Huh? Do they it's, all it's end up working university. at the Mount Olive factory? <laughs> yeah, it's the only degree you can get is in pickle making. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no, so Mount Olive, it's a place, and they, they make pickles. And me and Leah found out that if you go there and go and ask for their secrety little, like, hey, can we watch the video where you make pickles? <clears throat> like, it's this special, like, 15-minute documentary where, like, they tell you how they make fucking pickles. Yeah. If you do that, you get a free jar of pickles per person. Stop. Yeah. My God, how long is the pickle film? It's like fifteen minutes. It's not long. Whoa. Okay, hold like, on. It's can... not long. It is a video, especially about pickles. It's fifteen minutes long, and he said it's not even a long one. It's not. Fifteen minutes is not long. From I watched a thirty-minute like... video on mayonnaise last week. <laughs> this is not. This is child's play, Jim. This is what you sound like. Is it how it's it made? Style. Good. Like, is there a sick narrator going like the cucumbers oh, are yeah. sliced and then uh, along the conveyor belt to be brined yeah. in a, in a, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, really? Okay. Then I could watch that. Dude, I fuck with it's how awesome. it's made. How it's made is it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Because yeah, I've always great. wanted to know how, so, how so many things are made. Yeah. And, and, this, and that show tells me how. it's the best. It, yeah, exactly. And you could find out how pickles are made at Mount Olive. And then you get a free, it's also, it's not like a free, you get a free jar of dill pick. You get a free jar of whatever fucking pickles you want, man. So you can get the spicy and pickles. You can get the like. I bet at the so factory they have pickles. like the weird niche ones that they don't sell in like your local market. Yeah. Like like they're like. I don't even I can't even think of any, but I'm telling you, there's at least 50 different types of types of pickles that they had. That's so many types of pickles. It's a lot of types of pickles. It's crazy. I didn't even think there were that many types of pickles, period. So are you saying this is a secret pickle film? Like they don't post anywhere that this is something that you can redeem? It's like a hidden like Easter egg thing. Show me the pickle pickle. video. (laughs) So, hey, we'd like, we just walked up to this lady and we're like, hey, we'd like to see the pick. Sorry, you got to see my eyes. It's very important. We'd like to see the pickle video. And she was like, right this way. Oh my and God. then we walked into this little, this little. I gotta back bring room. you to the pickle room. <laughs> yeah, she like opened up a curtain, and we walked through, and there's a whole wall of pickles on the right, and there's this little like, you know, like in elementary school when they wheeled the TV in. Yeah, yeah, there was just one of those sitting there, and it's like a screen like barely larger than my uh, computer screen. It's very small. Yeah, and we just sat in two chairs. There were just two chairs sitting there. Like, they don't have, like, seminars or, like, big groups of people. Like, it's usually just, like, one or two people that want to come in and watch the video. So there's just two chairs sitting in front of a TV in an empty room with pickles laced across the entire right wall. I'm so sorry, but all I can imagine is that you get brought to this, like, back office. Like, it's like a... It's like a 20-minute walk from wherever you were (laughs) to wherever you went. And you were too socially awkward at that point to refuse to sign the, like, 30-page, like, NDA that they handed to yeah. you. 
And they were like, before you watch the video, you have to sign this non-disclosure you agreement. You gotta sign this. And then you, you, you were like, I walked 30 minutes to get here, and I'm just trying to yeah. get... I think it's just a free jar of pickles. I'll watch it. And then you signed it, and then they forced you into another room with two chairs. And they clockwork oranged you to, like, open <laughs> your eyes and sit you in front of a projector screen. You can't miss a second! And I think you were in that room for three days. Hmm. I don't That's think that, that was long. 15 minutes. I think that was a three day. Because there was that three days this week that I haven't heard from you. You didn't message me back for three days. I was worried about you. The last message I got was, hey, man, going to Mount Olive. Want anything? I just realized that I shaved my mustache before I went in. Yeah. And are you starting to get some scruff back? I, I am. And is, is that five o'clock shadow I, or is that three day scruff? I, it's three day, and I had just gotten a haircut, and I was wearing different clothes. And I didn't. And I didn't smell so much like pickles. Pickles. <laughs> I thought I was sweaty, but I think it's, oh, it's pickle juice. It's vinegar. I've been oh. doused in vinegar. What happened? Where did Leah go? She's what not. The the ho- f- she's not. She's not here. I don't know where Leah is. It's like, like, what the fuck is this bit? It's a Christmas episode. Roll the fucking no. title and let's. No, wait, let's, wait, 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 wait. No, wait, we're no, so close. we have to we're run so the close. intro. We have to, we have to run away from this. We have to roll the intro and we have to start the goddamn Christmas episode with Merry Santa and the Medford sleigh races. Let's go! Welcome back, everybody. everybody and welcome back to another Christmassy episode of Anything But Politics. As Aww. always, my name's Jim and I'm here with Christmas. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Christmas. just Christmas. Hello it's Christmas. It's close to my name. It like, is. Honestly, it's close. I Christmas. Think... Roman? Or do you want a do you want a silly little name for Roman as well? I do uh, want a silly little name for Roman. Christmas, Christmas. I love it. It's That's it. It's, it's Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas. Christmas, the third. Christmas. <clears throat> Ooh, the third. There you the third go. Amongst, that really yeah. lends. That really lends a cadence to it. It really does. Christmas, Christmas, the third. It ties the room together. Mm, it really does. Wow. So, so let me, uh, yeah. uh, let me say, Christian, we're getting to a point in the show where, uh, name. so, so Christmas, we're getting to a point in the show where, uh, we're getting like third annuals. Yeah, we are. This hey, is our, uh, our fist, our, our fist, <laughs> uh, our Woo-hoo! first, our first official third annual. Welcome everybody to our first yeah. official third annual Christmas first and episode. Only. First and only third yeah. annual. This Christmas is the only episode. time we're gonna do it. This is the only time we're gonna do it three times. For the third time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it another three times because we'll be here. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll be here for your six. But welcome everyone. We hope uh we hope that you're celebrating the holidays from a place that you would like to be. Uh hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed with people you'd like to be with. And if yeah. you would not like to be where you are with the people uh that you are around, simply uh, uh be as antisocial as possible. Separate yourself, yeah. put on your headphones and sit back for the Christmas episode of Anything But Politics. So today I kind of had a a, a semi plan. Ooh. Because uh, the first year we ever did a Christmas episode, we're talking episode seven. We're talking about the Medford sleigh races. Medford sleigh races, and uh, that, uh, that was a that was a really nice episode. I went back literally yesterday at work and listened to it, and it was uh, it was nice. It was a nice. Uh, it's a classic. It was just good to listen to. It's classic. Yeah, it's uh, classic. And then the next year we were in a studio. 
Nope. No, we were not. We were in Seth's house. Seth's Seth's couch, yep. We were in between two studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, we're now in between studios again. Maybe Christmas <laughs> is cursed. Maybe it is. I love it. Maybe it <clears throat> is. Every year. Um, not next year. I will see. <laughs> Um, no way. We should be moving into a studio literally next month. Um, We're so excited. If you want to help make that happen, Patreon link in the episode description. Also, you'll notice that SaltySlothProductions.com turned into SaltySlothProductions.org. Don't talk about it. They organized. You should be proud of them for organizing. Damn, good job, Salties. Yeah, they organized. So we are now SaltySlothProductions.org slash ABP. And I revamped the website, and it looks so sexy, in my opinion. Hell yeah! I love Have you sexy seen it? Website. You need to go to the website very soon. You, I believe you had sent some like, uh, some like work in progress. Yeah, but I don't think I've seen the actual thing. Oh, it's, it's really good. Hell yeah! Anyway, um, I I mention all of this because I would like today to make a return to form. Here we are sitting in the rooms. I believe that we recorded episode seven in. Are you not? I am back in this room. I don't know if people just know my house by now with how uh, often I sit in different places. We're back I in have... the littler room of the two. The littler room. I love it. Yeah. I have moved twice since that day. Wow. So I hey, was, proud of you. <clears throat> thanks, man. I lived in Rocky Mount with my roommate, and then I moved solo to Greensboro, and now I'm living with my wife. Oh, you know what's lovely? In the episode seven uh, uh, Christmas episode, you said uh, we were talking about making new Christmas traditions, the fact that Merlin and I had like just gotten our own tree and like stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I asked you about making new tr- Christmas traditions, and you said that Christmas is pretty much the same since you were a kid, uh, yes. which is good. It means that you're still doing those like childhood things and those childhood the magic things. Is still there. Yeah. But you said that you're not yet making your own Christmas traditions because you're not yet living with your partner. Hopefully, right. maybe someday. Yeah. That day's come. Uh, Isn't that awesome? Dude, it's your first married Christmas. Married yeah. Christmas. Married Christmas. Yeah. We do have a tradition. <laughs> Ooh, tell me all about it. I don't know if she'll be. <laughs> I don't know if she'll be pumped to know that I said this on the show. Is she a missile hoe? <laughs> no. Well, oh, okay. well. So what we do is. So that thing thanks, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, we purchase. <laughs> So I go out and I find a sexy underwear and then she goes out and she finds a sexy underwear and then we both play strip poker and then we have sex. <laughs> That's Christmas. What does male sexy underwear look like? I don't know. I've yet to find any. That's not Wait, true. I just bought mine. I just bought you... mine. Oh, so you buy your own sexy underwear. I thought you were yes. buying each other's sexy underwear. Hey, no, try that this year. Super- no, 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 because it has to be a surprise. If I buy it for her, I know what she's going to look like. But with this... Thing, oh, that's know. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Because we thought about buying each other's, and then we were like, yeah, but then we know what it's going to look like, and it's like, there's no mystery. Did you, did you stick to your guns and, like, get sexy underwear? I did. We'll Dog. see what happens in the coming years. Dog, well, I'll use next it in, year, I'll turn it into I am a making you a cock stocking. It's going to be a little red stocking but you're just going to yeah. be able to slip it right on. Let's go. We'll bring stocking stuff for a new meaning. I don't know if we can include Ooh. any of this. Maybe Patreon. Probably Patreon. We'll probably put this on Patreon. Okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's the only tradition we've done. We've added so far. I love when we talk about having sex with our significant others. We just know that it's going to be a little like Patreon <laughs> special. Yeah, put it on Patreon. Put it for them. Uh, here, I, have a, I have a friendly, I have a YouTube friendly one. Okay, let's hear about it. We also bought... Let me show you. I love show and tell. This is something that I love about Christian uh, recording from home. We're both recording from home because... uh, Okay, so here's the deal. We, uh, last episode, 
is just a... Okay, I have literally a couple points that I want to hit before Christian shows us this little show and tell. So I'm going to wait till he puts his headphones back on, and then I'm going to go into this like whole huh? rant. What? what? Huh? So I have multiple points I need to hit before you show us that. Okay. First point being, last episode did not have a word because Fuck. it was it was pre-recorded. It was from the live stream, so Fuck. it didn't have its own word. Here's the yeah. thing. Recently, for a project that I will not tell people why I'm doing it, I have gone through and listened to the first five to 20 minutes of every episode we've ever done, mm. and I have figured out what my word for the episode was. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another blank episode. And yeah. all of the episodes that did not have a word, I created one because I'm the word boy and I'm allowed to. I have that power. I can retroactively assign words. So I assigned words to all the episodes that didn't have any. And last episode, uh, the one with uh, Nick Jones, the one from the Thank Miss live stream, I'm going to call it a pre-recorded episode. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to another pre-recorded episode. Because that's oh, exactly perfect. what it was. Filmed in front of a live studio audience. Um, <gasps> wait, anywho, James um, Radward Altman. That's thank the, you. Or I guess I could have gone with James Radford Altman, the word. Do both. The third. James Radford Altman, the word. <laughs> <laughs> Master of sex. Anyway, um, yeah, last episode didn't have a word, so I just wanted to assign that word to it. Um, Wonderful. I was going to say that I, I was telling them when, once you walked away that this is one of the joys of being remote is that uh, we were going to release the next few episodes as re-releases of edited portions of the stream. We were going to yeah. edit down the 12 hour live stream into one hour chunks, some with guests, some without, and release those as episodes. But what we saw when we released the Chowder episode last week is that because the majority of you that watch regularly uh, were attending the live stream and already saw that portion, or there are other things. The fact that it was a live stream, um, there's an uh, an evident drop in quality, just a little bit, not too much. It's we still a better like episode than like some of our guest episodes in like season <laughs> one in terms of like Discord quality. Not mm -hmm. in terms of the guest. All the guests were S tier. But yeah. uh, in terms of the quality of the episode, <clears throat> Even the live stream beats some, like, high-end season one stuff. So we were going to do that and release the next couple episodes as live stream bits. But because that ep the last episode got such low views because everyone had already seen it. And it had a little bit of a drop in quality. We have about half the views we normally do by this point. So uh, we're like, you know what? Fresh content. Let's just, let's just make some stuff. We don't prefer Discord episodes. We prefer in person. But... We don't prefer in-person pre-recorded, I should say. Or, like, recorded yeah. for another purpose. That was recorded for the purpose of the live stream. We want right. to give you something fresh. So, I just want to knock that out of the way really quick. Let's get back to Christmas. But, uh, I like when we're remote because you have all your shit. So, you can surprise me yeah. with weird shit you have. Yeah. yeah. So, we uh, went... Yeah. We went Christmas shopping last week. For those of you who don't know, I don't even, do, Jim, do you know, I'm like a big board game guy. Mm -hmm. I love board games. I think they're so fun. We play with our family every single year. We go back and I have, I have a favorite board game. Tell me and about that it. board game is Risk. Have you ever played Risk? I've not played it, but I know of Risk. It's a great fucking game and I love it so much. I love it a lot. Uh, what's what's playtime on Risk? Isn't Risk one of the long boys? No, I mean, it can be, it is not, it is not life. So the board game life, which is yeah. very short, but it's not monopoly, which is very, okay. very, very long. So yeah. it is, it falls somewhere in between. If monopoly is like, we'll call it two hours, which it usually is. Yeah. Risk is usually like an hour. Oh, it's neat. like 50 okay. minutes, 50 minutes to an hour, 10. So like you can sit down and have a really like good time and not want to die at any point. Nice. Uh, whereas life is like, we could probably play that again. It's just very, very fast. Like 20 minutes. Yeah. So risk is about world domination. You dominate the whole world. And there's, there's elements of chance as well as elements of 
strategy, which I love. Yeah. I love when, when those two things collide. Anyway, so we have just like a regular version, like just a, it's just you know, the typical board game, you know, you open up the board and it's 12 fucking squares that you have to figure out, puzzle piece it all together to open it up, put it on the ground, and then you got your stuff. Well, this year we saw this. We, we, we went to a toy store. Ooh. Yeah. And we found this guy. He's massive. He's, it's a board made of wood. And it's really fucking cool. And I'm really excited to play it. Uh, and the price tag is on there. My bad. Just take that off. Oh, uh, I couldn't see it. It's $120. Which honestly nice. like, isn't... It's a... It's a it's a 60th anniversary. It was like a Christmas present for us. Like, we both bought it for ourselves. Like, a Christmas yeah. present for yourself. Yeah. And I, 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 um, I know that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it, but it's the, it's the 60th anniversary. Because we both love this game. And it's a great game. And uh, so this is what... Th- I think this is going to be turning into a tradition. Every year we'll just... We'll get a new board game. And we'll try a new board game. This year's Risk. It's not a new one. But it's a one. And I'm very excited. So... Yeah, so I think that's. I think we're gonna try to turn that into a tradition because we both like playing board games. They're very fun. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. Uh, so that was good. That was just something that I uh, heard listening back to episode seven that I really enjoyed. Do you have any? But new as ones? for today's return to form, do you, do you have any new ones? Do I have any new traditions? Yeah. I don't know if I. I didn't talk about it in episode seven, but every year we have gone to every year that he's been here we've gone to the local uh racetrack because they do speedway and lights yeah and all around the track for uh i don't know how long it is it's quite long um it's just one long track that you go through and then you end this little trip on the racetrack and you do a lap and then you leave, and then you have a little bit more before you actually exit. But it's just a little, like, one-way little, like, uh, exhibit of Christmas lights. And they're just these huge ones, very intricate. And uh, and then you get to drive on the racetrack, and in the middle of the racetrack, you can go to, like, a little Christmas village. And they have some, like, theme park rides, like a, like a merry-go-round, and, like, some teacups and whatever. So um, cute. Funnel cake. Uh, which has become a Merlin uh, American food favorite. Uh, Funnel funnel cake's good, man. Oh, yeah. Funnel Um, cake's good. And and then a little gift shop where every year we are getting a new (laughs) ornament so we can write the year on it and then uh, put it on the tree every year and then, like, build up a little, like, ornament army. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Ornament army. One of them was the one that we used during the live stream. Remember the, uh, I think, the gingerbread man? Which was not one of the other plastic like ornaments. It was just like a little gingerbread man that we had to put a sticker on. I don't remember that. Well, uh, I I think he was one of the two ornaments that we've gotten so far. Love it. Cause I don't know if we went during twenty twenty. Mm, probably not. Maybe not. I don't know. If things, I don't know if they were doing it. Right. It was like half, things were like half open, so I don't know if they would have done something like that scope. Yeah. If I go through my ornaments and I find one for 2020, I'll tell you. But, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's uh, not particularly a new one, but it's one that we've kept up with, and it's one that I don't think we uh, uh, talked about in the, the previous yeah. two Christmas episodes, so I'm comfortable with I love that. talking about love that. that. Anyway, return to form. Return to form. So we're at home. We have our mm-hmm. computers. Therefore, I've pulled up some tabs. The tabulations! Let's go! Things that were posted back, baby. between 2019. or no, not 2019. Our first episode was in 2020. Things that were posted between 2020 when that episode came out and now. These weren't Whoa. on the internet when we went through our Christmas facts for episode 7. <laughs> These are new articles. How exciting! Happybeds.co.uk slash blog slash 10 website. unknown Christmas facts. So you're telling me I'm not going to know any of these until you say them? Of course, because they're unknown. Whoa! Well, please uh, enlighten me. Yeah, well, there are actually some know. kind of okay ones. Uh, like Jingle Bells was the first Christmas song in space. 
1965. It means that uh, in 1965, <laughs> it was the first uh, uh, Christmas song to be played in space. It was played during the Gemini 6A space flight. It was broadcast as a prank from the astronauts to those down below. Wow. I still don't really know what that means. I don't know. what What's the prank? Oh, um, <clears throat> they probably just weren't meant to be doing that. As far as I'm concerned, space travel is taken a little seriously. So I don't know if, like, using your radio waves to be like, <laughs> listen to this shit. Jingle and all of a sudden they're like, did you bring your phone? You weren't supposed to bring your phone onto this ship. And he's like, dude, we're like 10 feet from the satellite. My Wi-Fi is goddamn ridiculous right now. That's funny. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just playing Jingle Bells through the radio. I don't know what the prank is, but uh, hey, it was the first classic. Christmas song. It was the first Christmas song in space, Christian. Sorry, my bad. Also, a little bit about Jingle Bells. I have a separate tab open regarding Jingle Bells. Because uh, Jingle Bells is a little, like, long-time fan favorite. Mm -hmm. Continue. I'm so concerned. What is this? Is this allowed? Yeah. Are we going to be struck for this? No. I'll tell you what. It sounds awful. Not only do I not recognize this, it hurts to hear. <laughs> Why are you doing this? He's got fucking pranked, bro. Oh my god. Eat shit, bro. You got pranked. That was a horrible version of Jingle Bells. Anyway. Continue. Yeah, that honestly sucked. <laughs> I'm going to send you something in Discord. Please. So I'm on this website talking about uh, where Jingle Bells was composed. And of course, we know that Jingle Bells was originally formed as a Thanksgiving song to right. mark the, uh, the uh, of course, uh, famed yearly Medford sleigh races. Medford Sleigh Races. Let's go. There were some things that we didn't look into immediately uh, regarding the fact that we know it was James Pierpont. Uh, we knew it was 1850. Uh, uh, copyrighted in 1857. Okay. But I'm not sure we talked about the fact that uh, Medford is in Massachusetts. I didn't know oh. where Medford was. No way. Not only is it... Somewhere. Not only is it Medford, Massachusetts, I need you to understand that if you're looking at the picture I sent you, it is in Middlesex County. Stop. There's no way. There's no uh, way, dude. Medford, Massachusetts is in Middlesex County. The marker, uh, there's a little like inscription over here. Um, the marker is on High Street on the right when traveling west. Uh, it's from, it's, on the first block up from Medford Square. <laughs> and uh, the sign says, uh, Jingle Bells composed here. On this site mm -hmm. stood the Simpson Tavern, where in 1850, James Pierpont wrote the song Jingle Bells in the presence of Miss Otis Waterman, who later verified that the song was written here. Pierpont had the, I love old-timey news, because you just had to <laughs> trust, uh, like, Miss Otis Waterman, and just be like, yeah, he totally wrote it here. I saw him doing it. Yeah. Uh... You just had to trust her. Yeah. So she verified that the song was written here, and you know how trustworthy she is. So Pierpont. Well, had hey, the song it's Otis. It's Miss. It's Miss Otis Waterman. Of course, she's like very rep. Uh, she's very rep. She's very rep reputable. Reputable. Yeah. Yeah. Reputable. I got she, there. She's like the most trustworthy person in Medford. Anyway. <laughs> Pierpont had the song copyrighted in 1857 while living in Georgia. Uh, Jingle Bells tells of the sleigh races held on Salem Street in the early 1800s. We gotta go to Salem Street, Massachusetts. We gotta, we gotta get some horses. We gotta yeah, do this. Definitely. Speaking of uh, um, Middlesex, this is just a crazy thing. What about before sex and after sex? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Christian, also, this, uh, this photo I sent you, are you looking at it? Yeah, I'm looking at it still, yeah. Can you tell me what it says under the picture? Why is that a thing? The Medford <laughs> Historical Society? No, no, no. Below that as well. Below the picture. Oh. <laughs> 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 
for those for those watching on any type of visual platform, we'll go ahead and send this picture to Seth. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad it got such a little chuckle out of you, but it just says jungle bells. That's all it says. It just says it says jungle bells composed here. They switched the I for you, which is the button right next to it. It sure is. So it was a jungle simple typo, but jungle bells is. I want you to know that if they hit the button in the other wrong direction, it would have been jungle bells. <laughs> That's even better. Because <laughs> jungle isn't even a word. Jungle bells is a real like that could be a real thing, but it just kind of sounds funny. Jungle bells is hilarious. That, that's brilliant. Woo, that got me good. That's good. That, Jungle bells. It got it got me too. I was really glad I pulled that one up. Let's yeah. let's move on to a non Medford Slay Races related uh, uh okay. little uh. So fuck Jingle Bells. We're gonna talk about the fact that this is interesting Christmas culture trivia, dog. Ooh. Um. First things first. I think I knew this one. Did you know that Santa wasn't always dressed in red? He was dressed in blue. Oh, is that right? Did we talk about this? I feel it. I thought we did. There's no, two... I'm... Yeah, I thought we... Did we? I feel like he was dressed in blue. I or... literally have no idea. All I know is that... All I can find for, like, literal certain is that uh, it was... I think it was... Oh, okay. Okay. So here's exactly what I'm reading. I'm reading that the common myth is that Santa Claus was green before Coca-Cola used their colors red for marketing campaigns. And while this is kind of true to an extent, Santa was shown in red as early as the 1870s, not the 1900s, by the American cartoonist Thomas Nast. The modern day depiction of Santa with the red cheeks, the large stomach, the little glasses, the big smile, that's what we can genuinely thank Coca-Cola for. Wow. Um, yeah. Tan, by the way. Tan colored, not blue. Whoa. Yeah, just like a tan, which is weird. Stop. What is this? Rudolph was a marketing tactic. By? Coca-Cola? No, by... Uh, I don't Christmas? know who would be benefiting from this. Um, coloring book manufacturers or crayon manufacturers? Uh, it be, it's become an integral part of Christmas culture, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And we all know the story of poor Rudolph trying to fit in with Santa's other reindeer. But did you know that he There's was created loser. for a marketing campaign by American uh, department store Montgomery Ward? They wanted to make fun coloring books to give away to children in 1939, and they tasked Robert L. May to create a poem for the book. And Rudolph was born due to this. It became a cultural icon. I wouldn't call it a marketing creation. That's not what I would glean yeah. from this text. No, not really. Um, right? Well, you know what? Fuck that text then. I, I hate... 10 unknown Christmas facts from happybeds.co.uk. I'm more interested yeah. in 35 surprising Christmas facts from goodhousekeeping.com. You're telling me I'm going to be surprised at these? Yeah. Uh, surprise, surprise, motherfucker. Uh, you know who did the cookies and milk first? What do you mean by did that? Like put them out or ate them first? Uh, who put them out first? Who put them out first? Uh, mm. who left out food and drink and started the tradition to feed Santa? Um, I can't think of a joke, so I don't know. Surprise, the Dutch. I am floored. We did talk a little bit in that uh, first Christmas episode about other uh, holidays traditions, of course, uh, in very classic form. We've got Japan with their uh, KFC. KFC, baby. That was a classic. Uh, is Japan's sure is. Christmas KFC. It's their favorite meal on Christmas. They call ahead two months in advance to make sure they have their Christmas meal. Um, gotta make sure. Gotta make sure. Uh, and then we also have uh, leave a pint out for Santa. A pint and a, mi a mince pie uh, in uh, some places in Europe. But uh, it looks like the Dutch, we didn't talk about two years ago, the fact that the Dutch started this. So thank you. Thanks, Dutch. Thanks, yeah. the Dutch. Bro, this website also uses number nine. Rudolph was a marketing ploy. Is this even better? Hold on. Uh, Might be. 
asked one of its copywriters to create a Christmas story for kids that the store could distribute as a promotion. Ah, so, that's better. Yeah, but still distributing them. I don't know. As you a, give, but it's a promotional thing, so it is technically marketing. Anything so you have Montgomery, you have Montgomery Ward, big and fat, on the front of the coloring book, and then you give all mm -hmm. these kids the coloring books, and then they go run around with their little coloring book, and all of a sudden your name is all over the city. I suppose, yeah, that's marketing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> well, Thank you, yeah. GoodHousekeeping.com, for for much actually, uh, yeah, much better. Oh, uh, let's see why? if they tell this fact a little better as well. Astronauts broadcast jingle bells from space. Uh, many of us did a prank that almost went too far. Nine days before Christmas, two astronauts aboard the Gemini 6 told Mission Control that they saw an unidentified flying object about to enter Earth's atmosphere, traveling in the polar orbit from north to south. Just as things got tense, they interrupted the broadcast with jingle bells. As Wally uh, Shira played a small harmonica accompanied by Tom Stafford, uh, shaking a handful of small sleigh bells. That's so fucking funny. That means That's they planned it. That's a much it. better. That is a much better prank than just like, oh, they played That's... it over the airwaves. That is hilarious. This is why context no. is important in journalism, guys. Yeah, for real. Good for housekeeping real. doesn't just have more quantity. We've gone from ten facts to, to we've gone from ten unknown facts. To 35 surprising facts. Oh, 35. And some of these are doubled up, but they're better. Every single one that's been used on both, Good Housekeeping did it better. So no good uh, that is kind of it. funny. So they're like, so they're reporting Santa's sleigh is what they're doing, right? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's an hilarious. unidentified flying object uh, entering Earth's atmosphere, traveling in the polar orbit north to south. North to south. That's so funny. And then just when the mission control was kind of like freaking the fuck out, they started playing jingle <laughs> bells as both of the astronauts played a harmonica and sleigh bells. So you're right. They planned it. They Yeah, they had to bring those on board. So they were like, we're going to do this shit and it's going to be hilarious. How long in advance do you think that took? Because like oh, space man. missions don't happen in like a week. No, no they do not. Well, even not, modern day. Even modern day billionaires going, I want to spend all the money at my disposal to build a rocket and get to space. It still takes them like, what, a month to do it yeah, from it conception to take off. Like yeah. there's there's some shit that goes into it, especially yeah. in 1965, which is four years before we landed on the moon. Yeah. Uh, would you like to try and quickly find anything, or do you just like me kind of so, uh, reading what I found? Well, I did have... There's some Am I the Asshole Christmas editions. Stop. I think yeah. that uh, we can we can start hitting those. I think we can make a transition over to those. You want to? Yeah, let's go nuts. So, okay. Oh, so they have the answers. Yeah. Like, before you even read it, you can see what the people said. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, so Seth can... has typically read them to us in the past. <laughs> yes. Just, uh, so don't, just don't take that into your, don't take that into your, uh... Don't? Don't weigh that. No. Oh, I kind of like it. That way I can weigh. Okay, but um... I can't. So don't lead me on to know which it is. Okay. And we'll see if we agree. Okay, <clears throat> am I the asshole for call? I just picked the top one. Am I the asshole for calling my wife ridiculous for saying that she won't attend my family's Christmas over some so uh, stockings? Okay, I'm already going to start by saying I'm leaning towards the wife being right. But go on. Alrighty. I'm just my leaning mom towards that. Okay. My mom has a tradition for every Christmas, and that is to get custom stockings for her grandchildren's names. Okay. Cody, Mia, Sammy, and Elena. Awesome. Go and dox And hang it. those stockings near the fireplace. I'm sorry? Yeah. Dox what? <laughs> just go ahead and say- their last names? I just know. I know it doesn't say their last names, but I, I, I just know that they didn't <coughs> change their names. Those are actually these kids' <laughs> they names. Didn't. Of course they are. Even though it adds nothing to the story, it's not important. Like, you don't need to put their <laughs> your children's names at all. <laughs> Go on. That's so funny. My Wait, wife. What's the, I'm so sorry. I don't want to dig deeper shit. 
What's the name of the user? So look under the post name, the post title. You should see yeah. a little U slash. That U stands yeah. for user. What comes after that slash? U slash. It looks like th five, three, four, five, six. Is that a last name? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. That's so <laughs> funny if it is. <laughs> Here are all of my kids first. And last. I'm so sorry. Go on. Go on. My wife and I have been together for three years. She has a stun. A stun. She has a son. My stepkid. From her former marriage. When she found out about the tradi- the tra Oh my gosh, I can't read. Okay, when this guy needs to- I'm, I'm so sorry. Immediately, this guy needs no. to learn a couple of quick fucking things about redundancy. Mm. Uh, I am married. She has a son. That makes him my stepkid. Step that <laughs> means that info. she had him as part of another marriage. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, I know! Just say you have a stepson and move on. We can infer everything you just said from that. <laughs> I'm when sorry. She found, when she found out about the tradition my mom has, uh, that's the woman who gave birth to me, she said she expected <laughs> Stop, to that's step. not real. <laughs> that's not real. Fuck you. <laughs> she said she expects my stepson to get his own custom stocking and be hanged along with the other kids' stockings. To get his own? Does she provide the other kids' stockings? I'm sorry. I could let you yeah. keep reading. No, no, She gets good. the other grandkids the stockings. She... Yes, the tradition is that, see, it's filled with so much mumbo jumbo, you don't get the actual good information. Uh, my mom has a tradition for every Christmas, and that is to get custom stockings for her grandchildren's names. To get them. Yes, she, per I guess and she, she is asking. Them. she is asking this kid to get his own. <laughs> yeah. This child? Yeah. Get your own yeah, sock, child. fucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Am I the asshole for calling my right wife ridiculous? Yeah, yeah, you are. You are the asshole. That is my- Wow, you're- you're I don't need any more detail. Stamp, wow, you're, you're already ass. landing there. Prick. I asked my mom and she said that she loves her step-grandchild, but does not feel comfortable yet to have a stocking of his name and gang it in her home. I assume that's supposed to say hang it. Apparently my wife refused to drop it and chose it as a hill to die on. Wow, how dare you die on the fact that your son should be included in our Christmas traditions. He's definitely an asshole. Um, no, um... I was and going it to is, say that... Uh, yeah. I don't know how much a custom stocking... It can't be that much. Listen, to, to put the name... Uh, does it say the stepson's first and last name? And middle name uh, and social security number? <laughs> does it say his name? Uh, it says... Tim... Okay, so hey, Tim... A custom, let's say you get, like, Christopher. That's a longer name, right? Yeah. Let's say you get Christopher, custom put Or on Esteban stocking. Julio Montoya. Sorry. Ricardo De La Rosa Ramirez? <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. say you got that put on a, put on a <laughs> stocking. How much is that going to be? 20 bucks tops? You're already buying four other ones for Cody, Sammy, You're Aisha. not buying no, them. Not you bought them. them. Or are they custom every year? Elena. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's before. You just get them once, right? Yeah, yeah, you would just get them once. So you're not having to break the bank buying five. Wait, You're only wait, having to buy wait, wait. one new one. No. My mom has a tradition for every Christmas, and that is to get custom stockings of her grandchildren's names. I think it's a new one every year. Okay, that's cool. So just throw in another one. You bitch. I... I don't care what reason you give. I think the most likely reason she would be apt to give is, oh, uh, are they married? Do we know if this guy, it's wife, right? His wife? Yes. Why the hell would yeah. this woman feel comfortable doing this? They, they've been married for three years. What the f- Why did she- Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, stamp. Ass. Ass. He's yeah, ass. Yeah, that's- That's what every, everybody's like, dude, you're a fucking asshole and your mom's a piece I'm just gonna keep doing work. this. It's a stamp, guys. I promise it's a stamp. I'm stamping something. Asshole. Asshole, asshole. Asshole. <laughs> nice. So we got some Christmassy yeah. Emma the assholes. We got a yeah. Christmassy episode. That was our word yeah. today. Uh, yep, we got just some to recap, facts, some we Christmas got some we, we got some Christmas facts. We got a Jungle yep. Bells update. We did get Jungle uh, Bells. We learned that Medford was in Middlesex County in Massachusetts. Sure is. A lot of M's there. A lot of M's. Middlesex, Medford, and Massachusetts. There you go. A lot of M's. The triple it's M. It's a very... Merry Christmas. Mid. So, oh. uh... 
we want to say uh, happy holidays to all those who celebrate any holiday around uh, the December, November, January times. Except for, well, we all know which one. <laughs> what holiday are you not allowed to? July 4th. So... That's in July, dog. Yeah, I know. You're not allowed to celebrate in December. <laughs> you know what? You're right. I suppose. <laughs> Halloween as well. What the no, f- you can. It, there, there's nothing about Halloween that says it has to be in October. Nothing. By definition, it's October 31st. But it's like it's Thanksgiving Halloween. is the, the fourth Thursday day. The last Thursday of the month. Yeah, but it's not like, it's not like, thing, it's not like in the name. No. <laughs> Just because the 4th of July is like the, 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 the only, only holiday, holiday that... that has the actual date in it. Yep. I suppose. Actually, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good <laughs> rule set. Yeah. Is that I mean, as long as it has the name of the date in it, you have to use that date. Okay. You can't. Eh, not, you, this you can't du- not it's use dumb. It. Dumb joke. <laughs> dumb joke. Good. Bad comedy. Uh, Hell yeah. That's what. That's is there what anything else you wanted man. to touch? There's plenty of things. Hey. <laughs> I want to touch the Liberty Bell so bad. Yeah. If there's nothing else you wanted to go ahead and hit, then did uh, I ever? I wanted to, did I'm so so I'm so sorry. You're did fine. I ever I'm not saying I want to talk about it right now, but did I ever talk about my honeymoon? I don't think so. I don't recall because we were coming back from a break. And I just yeah, don't think it ever I don't think I don't I ever, like, think so. Fucking There was a lot of stuff that was that is funny, but I'll we'll talk about it another time. So after this, we have one more episode this year. That'll be our, uh, do you want to, we celebrate New Year's, uh, last episode of the year, right? Not first episode of the new year. I think our New Year's episode is like in December. And then we talk about the new year in the, I think we just have two New Year's episodes essentially. Yeah, I think so. Wait, I have one more last thing. Yeah. So Jim. Yeah. I think, I like to think I know you pretty well. I, I think so. I think you do. In terms of and people so have, that know me, you rank yeah. very high. And so I have a question. Okay. That I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't want this cut. Even if it turns out that this didn't end up happening, I want me to look like a dumbass because I'm so confident that I know about what I'm about to ask that I'm just okay. going to, I'm going to ask it and it can be. How is Markiplier's OnlyFans? You know what? <laughs> You know what? What? I haven't. What? No way! I, ha- I, I have really? not. Really? Yeah. Wow! I really figured you would have. I just haven't. You know what? It's not even just because like I'm not going to. I just haven't gotten around to it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've I don't heard know. It's good. I forget what day he did it, but like I've been it's like a week busy. Ago. I get that. Just that. because uh, that of the 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 live stream is over, and while we've got nothing else like super big coming up, I mean, like we do have a lot of little things coming up. We have the studio mm-hmm. that we're moving into in January. Yeah, all the we have on the that. um, and if y'all want to help with that one last time, there's Patreon in the episode description. Woo-hoo. Um, we've got uh, I think we're okay with like kind of dropping the fact um. Y'all interested? Y'all hit up the comments or hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, let's talk about episode 100 merch. Let's talk about that. Let's open up that dialogue. What do y'all want? What do y'all want to see? What do y'all see? want? What do y'all we'll wear? Do I'm taking orders. Ooh. I'm going. I'm going to the store. What y'all want? You want? I've got. I've got a call from. I've got a call from Leah. I'm gonna need t-shirts, to dip be- beanies. I'm gonna need to dip. Dip. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to dip. Because I got a Dip. call from Leah, and I don't know what that's all about. She is away, so. Okay, but, uh, in that case, um, like, peace it, out, Dip? Like, Dip Dip? Yeah, I gotta go, go, go. Okay. Um, Sorry. Do you just want to, like, insta-wrap it? Well, you continue with what you were saying. I'm just gonna... <laughs> Bye, love you all. Mm, big kisses. Now Jim's gonna do some announcements. Bye, everybody. Bye, Christian. Happy holidays. Mwah, mwah, mwah.
Merry Christmas. Bye. Y'all. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays, everyone. Um, I don't have any real announcements. I do want to thank Salty Sloth Productions for um producing us and making this show happen. Uh, and getting us this studio that y'all will be seeing in January. Uh, one final, final time. Patreon link in the episode description to be able to kind of help with making that dream happen. Patreon, of course, there's a lot more stuff coming. We're going to be able to get back to making bonus content because we're off of these big, huge projects. I'm actually talking with uh, Anna, our producer right now, about uh, 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 expanding the Salty Sloth podcast network. We might be having like a sister podcast or like a another show on the network soon. Uh, not ABP related, but uh, we're looking into it. Other than that, not sure what else. Again, happy holidays. Uh, wherever you celebrate, however you celebrate, and whoever you celebrate with. Uh, go ahead and enjoy these next couple days. We'll see you guys in a week. Uh, we'll talk about the new year. We'll talk about things we want to uh, accomplish. We'll talk about uh, some resolutions. So start thinking about yours now because we're going to have a little pop quiz. We're going to have a little homework. And uh, we are going to ask you guys next week in the comment. No, don't answer this week. You have a week to think about it. And then we'll put it in the comments next week. And then, uh, or you know what? I totally fucking lied. Put them in the comments now. We'll talk about them next week. How about that? Put them in the comments right the hell now. And we are going to talk about your your New Year's resolutions next week. How about that? I like that idea a lot. Well, I'll ask our patrons as well. I'll send out a message like right after I cut this video. But thank you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you all next week for the last episode of 2022. It's coming to a close. It's been a good one. We're, st- we're stoked. We're so stoked. Uh, we love you very, very much. Merry holidays. Uh, happy Krima. And goodbye. Hey, everyone. Just wanted to give a special shout out and thank you to Jamie, Jess, Kat, Sky, and Brian, our top patrons this week. And we just want to say, y'all really don't know how much we appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much.